Welcome to Venice to everybody. I begin. This short communication aims to argue about some aspect of Venice and this architecture, linking the past to the present and to the future that in a city like this are even more closely inseparable than elsewhere due to its history and the geography. This lecture's origins from a still ongoing exhibition at the M9 Museum in Mestre, curated by me with Guido Zucconi and the Archivio Progetti, the university structure dedicated to the preservation of the 20th century architectural documents, a structure that soon I hope will host you. The title of the exhibition is uh, Le Sfide di Venezia, The Challenges of Venice. And the title of this lecture is Venice City of the Future, Venezia Città del Futuro, because from the challenges that the city has been facing for centuries and it still actually faces, for sure, its future will be shaped. From those challenges, which is the, the city lives in such a singular way, several lessons for the future arise for the cities of today. What is Venice? This seems to be the question that the city asks ask to those who live in it, visit it or study it. And many people have tried to answer this question. I would like to mention among the several publications two very famous one, Death in Venice by Thomas Mann and The Stone of Venice by John Ruskin. Both, both writings were contributed, have contributed to interpretation of the city as condemned to an immobile destiny, to an unstoppable decline. But is Venice really on decline? For answering to this question, two recent books have given opposing answers since their titles. If Venice dies, se Venezia muore, written by the archaeologist Salvatore Settis, and the Venezia vive if, if Venice lives by the Venetian historian Mario Isenenghi. So, is Venice alive or dying? Like New York City and, a few, and like a few uh, other cities in the world, it is impossible to separate the city from its representation from uh, Joseph Broski's Fondamenta degli Incurabili to the memorable scenes in the Fenice Theater from Lucchino Visconti's movie Senso, Venice is closely linked to writing, painting, music, cinema, theater, and all the performing and visual arts. Overall, Venice is linked to its architecture. Even though for centuries it was the leader of the Mediterranean trade, the power of Venice has always been more subtle and influential. One example is given by a humanist, Aldo Manuzio, who in the 15th century directed the modern form of publishing and of typography to spread the great Greek and Latin literature. For this reason, he decided to settle down in Venice than one of the most influential cultural center in the world. Manuzio hosted many Greeks literati refugees from Constantinople already fallen into Muslim hands. Through the work of this man and of many others like him, we understand what Venice is, a network, a landing point, a melting pot, a forge, of inventation and the diffusion. As if dancing in a timeless enchantment founded on an instable ground, on a moving surface wrapped in a blue that joins water and sky, Venice bewitches for its extraordinary blue beauty. The beauty of the city is a millennial construction result a set of projects and challenges that intertwine the environmental condition and the deposit of history. Linked in space and time, challenges and projects form the city 
as a unitary natural and artificial work, as a collective work in which the generation along a millennium passes the torch, that is, this torch, the destiny of the city. In Venice, each project draws its strength and its identity from the difficulties that the city poses. It takes form as a wise answer to, an, to a complex place. So Venice, more than any other city in the world, shows that the city does not exist without in its landscape, that the, for, that the future does not exist without its past. The evidence is its beauty, which is the common language of the world city and the guarantee of its own future. The beauty of Venice is a condition of its own survival. This is the third challenge that Venice poses, the city as a place of beauty. A beauty that arises from the tension between the enchantment of poetry and the concreteness of construction. This admirable and achieved balance places Venice among the world city, generating both the mass tourism and that threatens the city and its singular presence in the world of art and architecture. Venice itself is not a project of a transformation like other world city, but it acts as a sort of immobile engine. Venice is perfect because of it is unchangeable in its form, as the epic narration of his myth says. It, ends, it has been nourished for centuries by the commercial trade that landed in the city by sea. It is formed by an archipelago of island crowded around the two centers. The first one, the civil and the religious with the patriarchal church of San Marco and the political and administrative venues of the Doge's palaces and Pucratia, the second one, the Rialto area, dedicated to money, banks, and stores. It is not by chance that is a bridge to link the two banks, not by change that is a bridge of stores. A republic and not a kingdom, endowed more with commercial and administrative structure than with armies, the city was scattered with fondaci complex buildings dedicated to welcoming foreigners who traded interest and good in the city, and with scuole, cultural and religious places where confraternities organized trade and assistance to the poor, as well as theater for prose and music. Fondaci, scuole and theaters gave the city a long lasting cosmopolitan and interclassist life. They were the engine of its economics social, intellectual, and artistic prosperity. Not only houses, churches, and the administrative center form the city, but the multitude of buildings of civil and cultural life made Venice a meeting place. place. This is a second challenge that Venice launches, the city as a place of human exchange. After more than a century of stagnation at the beginning of the 20th century, in order to have a future, Venice chooses to live in the contemporary world, finding the energy to realize a radical and deep renewal. The ancient capital then um, united the state of the sea and the state of the land, extending from the Aegean and islands to the Duchy of Milan, exploited by Napoleonic domination and especially by the Augsburgs, is a redesign in a due dimension. The with the unification in 1927 in a single municipality, the Great Venice embraces in a unique design the Anson Center, the Lagoon, the Lido, Porto Marghera, the working class city of Marghera, and Mestre. In this fir first decades of the last century, Venice reinvented its own destiny through the contemporary realization of three conditions, or in other terms, through the formation of three new parts of the city. The construction of the mainland here, of a vast industrial area with port facilities, 
the invention of the lady in the right side of the Im image of the slide, the invention of the Lido, the urban beach on the seaside with great hotels and luxury villas addressed to a selection, selected international tourism, the structuring of an international center of culture through the construction of the Biennale d'Arte, representing the principating, principating states in this garden and the participating state in this garden and in their international pavilions. The government of the new amphibious city becomes so complex because it requires to reconcile the antagonism of new times and new spaces with the rhythms, the sounds, the materials of the lagoon and of the ancient city. This aspect required to project the ancient beauty into the future. The Trans Lagoon Bridge is an essential engine of the change. In 1847, the railroad arrived in the old city, and in 1933, the automobile bridge was added to the railway route, constituting the final part of the highway coming from Milan and of the state road directed towards Northern Europe and the Balkans. The new infrastructural network connects the exhausted body of the Doji city to the 19th and 20th century national and international world of technique and enterprises. The ancient settlement logic is overtaken. Venice no longer, turn, no longer turns its port and arsenal towards the Levantine maritime traffic to the landing place and overlook of Piazza San Marco. But the city now looks from the Trans Lagoon Bridge at the New World, at the factories, at the freeways, at the North Italian and European city. Through the vehicular interchange, spot of Piazzale Roma, here you see the industrial addition of Venice, which is Porto Marghera, the, the city, the, the, the garden city of uh, um, Marghera. And this is the industrial part of Marghera as it is now, mostly abandoned. And this is the hotels and the um, luxury houses in the, uh, Lido. Through the vehicular interchange spot of Piazzale Roma and the rationalist garage built under Eugenio Miozzi's direction, it begins the construction of the unique amphibious city. On the mainland, on the inner edge of the lagoon, in 1970 uh, began the construction of the new industrial area of Marghera for the chemistry and for the iron and steel industry production and the new piers of Porto Marghera were realized. In this way, the biggest Italian industrial area with a huge port was built inside the lagoon. The power of these companies causes a massive rural urbanization from the countryside, though that in the 30s, the 30s, the conurbation of Mestre is designed under the garden city forms and the small historic center of Mestre begins to expand, reaching more than 90, thousand inhabitants today. The Trans Lagoon Bridge builds the connective tissue of the new urban unit, innervating through its branches on one side Mestre and Marghera and on the other side Venice with the water continuation. Revitalized by this flow of energy, new canals and new bridges were built in Venice to increase pedestrian mobility. From the Scalzi Bridge, this is the, the uh, Trans Lagoon Bridge. This is the, the design for the competition for the railway station Santa Lucia. And this is a new uh, bridge is built uh, on the new canals in Venice in the 30s. <clears throat> The Trans Lagoon Bridges um, builds the connective tissue of the new, excuse me, uh, sorry, 
Revitalized by this flow of energy, new canals and new bridges were built in Venice to increase pedestrian mobility. From the Scalzi Bridge, which still in the 1933 recalled the 60th century models, to the competition of the Academia Bridge announced by the Biennale in 1985. Here is the two um, project for this competition. To the Ponte della Costituzione, designed by Santiago Calatrava, the Trans Lagoon Bridge finally recomposes in an urban node the flow by car and by rail linking Piazzale Roma to the station of Santa Lucia in a sort of services forum for reaching the city, realizing a hypothesis that for long animated the local debate. In spite of the ongoing positive processes, the landless modification of the city keeps open many issues about the unsolved relation between the city of land and the place of contact with its historical center. Although Venice had been identified by its immutability, it realized the artificial island of Maritima and Tronchetto to give space to the function of the contemporary city, directional, commercial, infrastructural. The ensemble of Piazzale Roma, Stazione, and above all, Maritima and Tronchetto, makes one of the most complex and difficult places in Venice, an object of, of constant proposals. In the competition announced in uh, uh, 1961, there were two extreme choices. Gino Cappai, Antonio Foscar, and Pietro Mainardis imagine it as an expression of contemporaneity that contrasts with the ancient center. You see here the project. Giuseppe Samonà cut the connection offered by the bridge in order to restore, here is a bridge, he cut it, cut, cut the connection offered by the bridge in order to restore the ancient form of the Venetian center, thus dilating the continuous modification that this present was bringing about. In 1991, the Biennale announces a competition for the arrangement of Piazzale Roma, in which took part about 500 proposals, extended from the form suggested by Dixon Jones, the winner, to a large garden indicated by Bruno Morassutti. And again, in uh, 28, a new competition is announced for the Tronchetto. Here is the uh, proposal done by uh, Franco Purini. And again, in 28, a new competition is announced, announced for the Tronchetto to be transformed in a gate for services for the reception of tourists. To transform Venice, this part of the city in a normal part of the city, as proposed by Mauro Galantini, Galantino the winner. Overall, thanks to these places, contemporary architecture appears in the lagoon, emblem and two of the clash meeting always present in Venice, is the architecture to which, for the 20th century, the city has asked to offer effective answer. The innovative character is expressed by the industry and the popular residence in the mainland, by the infrastructure of mobility, such as bridges, garages, and stations, and by the equipment for cultural and seaside tourism, while in the old city prevail the wise meditation and the careful comparison between the past and the future, between innovation and tradition. In this way, along the Trans Lagoon Bridge, the two poles that form the contemporary city are arranged like the balance plates in search of a moment, a difficult moment of equilibrium. The process of renewal of Mestre, which finds its climax in the realization of M9 Museum by Sauerbrook Arton, is giving to this conurbanization the urban dignity. This is the third, the third challenge that Venice launches, the city as a place of diversity, of recomposition, immunity, of complexity. During 50s and 60s, that are the years of the, the post-war reconstruction, 
Venice became a challenging ground of modernity between modification and preservation of its exceptional form, a sign of the intellectual and artistic vitality that Venice was beginning to show was the purchase of the Cavaniere de Leone by Peggy Guggenheim to make it her home and the venue for her contemporary art collection, which included Kandinsky, Chagall, Ernest, Picasso, and Dalí. The young BBPR, the only Italian rationalist architects with an international dimension, imagined the project as a contrast of ancient and new elements. They superimposed to the water entrance and to the basement in an Eastern stone, the only realized part of the unfinished historical building, a very light glass volume intended as a transparent gallery on the water. Attracted also by the quality of the School of Architecture, the greatest master of the 20th century joined Venice, opening a season of reflection on the city, the decade and the world, but Venice rejected completely. Student resident on the Grand Canal, which he, which in which he reinterpreted the, the matrix, the traditional facade of the Venetian palaces. After a hostile press campaign, Carlos Carpa um, offered with a beautiful renovation, a city, a new place for culture. This is the project done by um, Frank Lloyd Wright. And this is the, this, the inner space of the um, project done by um, Carlos Carp. In the 60s, Le Corbusier elaborated the project for the new hospital of San Job, a sort of uh, Città Analoga, the, the analogic city, where the certification of volumes, streets, voids, and canal transcribed the minor Venetian urban fabric into a citadel of earth. You see all the plan of the hospital, the models of the different levels, and the models of some cellules. On the, on the international fame base is based the decision to make Venice the city of the Biennale of art, cinema, and the architecture. During the 20th century on the island, it takes place a staging of the contemporary with new pavilion, installation, exhibition, and events, which radiate from the enclosure of the gardens of the Biennale and the arsenal used by the Biennale along the city, attracting every year thousands of new merchants, foreigners, and nomads. You see here an installation done by Carlos Carpa and the Canadian pavilion done by BBPR, an organic architecture um, in the garden on the Biennale. And here is the um, Padiglione Italia, a competition won by Francesco Cellini. Since 18, uh, 1980, the Biennale of Architecture has been a main center of reflection on the world architectural phenomena, but also announces some international competition aimed at the future of the city, such as the bridges on the Grand Canal we saw before, the junction of Piazzale Roma and the, com the complexion of the Guggenheim, and of the Biennale itself, the Palazzo del Cinema and the Italian Pavilion, as you see here. During the post-war period, some Italian masters, such as Giuseppe Samonà, Ignazio Gardella, and Pierluigi Nervi, and Luigi Vietti, realized buildings to host a new function necessary for the actualization of urban life, reflecting on the form of the historical architecture to find the roots of the contemporary and the possibility to, to be part of Venice. We see here some buildings done by Giuseppe Samonà, 
eh, Luigi Vietti e Pierluigi Nervi e eh, Ignazio Gardella. At the same time, the city is going through a constant motion of restoration and the renovation of these palaces and minor residential buildings, its churches, and especially in recent decades, the reuse of a wide set of space that hosted vital function of the ancient republic to reallocate to the museum and cultural function. In this way, the tradition inaugurated by Carlo Scarpa with the Olivetti store that you see here and the Querini Stampaglia Library is nourished, often entrusting it to prestigious protagonists in the international scene. Tadao Ando restores the Pinot for Pinot de Dogana da Mar and the smaller theater of Palazzo Grazzi. Michele De Lucchi renovates the Mani Calunga as a library in the island of San Giorgio. Aldo Rossi rebuilds as it was at the, it, as it was where it was, the Teatro La Fenice. Renzo Piano curated the Fondazione Vedova in the Magazzini del Sale. Rem Colas renovates the Fondaco dei Tedeschi as a place for luxury shopping. David Chipperfield builds the expansion of the Monumental Cemetery of San Michele. Venice becomes a world center of changes in the art and architecture through the Biennale, through the universities, the broad world of museums, a public and private cultural institution set in an exceptionally dense way, thus reshaping the ancient singularity of the city of commerce. Here in this plan of the city, we put in red all the cultural institutions uh, that um, are in the city now, and you see the big amount of this uh, institution. Resisting to the hyper-technological and hyper-subjective calls that, that shake today's architecture, Venice gives shape to the universal, universal theme of the relationship between the past and the future, both through new architecture and the restoration of historical building, reminding us of the long construction time of the city as a collective manifestation and civil sentimentation. This is the first challenge that Venice launches. The city has a place of sedimentation, of expression of a long lasting language. If these are the challenges that, this Venice, that Venice has partly won in the 20th century, two new challenges need to be faced. In front of a global tourism, tourism assault, to preserve the normal day life, for inhabitants in front of the climate change to preserve its own ecosystem. To deal with the first problem, the 20th century is characterized by a long series of big residential interventions in the ancient city, the neighborhood of Sant'Elena and Santa Marta, on the mainland, the garden city of Marghera. After the Second World War, the village of San Marco was built. You see here the Villaggio San Marco as a large social housing settlement designed by Giuseppe Samonà and Luigi Piccinato. In the 70s, due, due to the demographic decline of the historical center, a new settlement program aimed at filling empty space on the margin of the insula. The plan took form after 1975 with a series of qualified projects mostly works of the UAV professor, as Gino Valle, Carlo Imonino and Aldo Rossi, Valeriano Pasto, who elaborated part, urban parts of the Giudecca. You, you see here the project by Giuseppe Samonà, a mestre, and here the project done by Carlo Imonino and Aldo Rossi alla, in the Giudecca Island. Here the project done by um, Gino Valle, also in the Giudecca Island. And here the proposal done by um, Carle Monino uh, in the island of San Giobbe. And here the, the construction of the say in the same place of the project done by, um, by uh, Vittorio Gregotti. I was saying um, mostly works 
uh, or professor you, from the school of, uh, you have. As Gino Valle, Carli Monino and Aldo Rossi, Valeriano Pasto, who elaborate urban parts of the Giudecca, Vittorio Gregotti here in San Giobbe in Venice, and in the island, Giorgio Macco, the renovation work of uh, Murano, of the factories in Murano, and Giancarlo De Cardo for Mazzorgo in, in, uh, by Murano. This is the first challenge that Venice launches, the search of a normal life for Venice. The last ch challenge sum up all of them, the challenge dealing with the climate change that threatens Venice above all through Aqua Alta. Venice is managed by the flow of the tides that twice a day enter and leave the lagoon and that are subject to great variation due to the winds. Venice in the wind while breathes and suffocates the movement of water. In addition to this historical fact, the planet global warming has increased the risk of floods that cyclically hits the city and the island of the lagoon. Venice has faced this imposing challenge through the long debate that brought to the realization of the Mose, the mobile barriers that closes the area the three sea mouth of the Lido in time of dangers and the work of accommodation of the broad structure necessary for the installation and operation. This is the, the, uh, the, uh, aerial, an, an aerial photo of the uh, Lido with the installation of the work um, for the uh, Mose. and the proposal done by, done by um, Alberto Ferlenga, the former, the former um, dean of the school for this part of, uh, of for one month, um, one site of the uh, barrier. This is the third challenge at Venice launches, the response of the city to the climate. This challenge, is the challenge that brings together all the previous one for the complexity of the intervention, but also for the meaning it has in the construction of the future of Venice, to preserve the fragility of the precious ecosystem in, a, in, in an exceptional anthropic landscape of a deep network between history, nature, and beauty. Okay, I have finished. I hope that was enough clear. Thank you very much, Serena. Thank you very much for the lecture. Um, I have to say, uh, I'm, I'm somewhat uh, um, hesitant to get back to Venice because now I realize how much more there is for me to see that I haven't yet seen. So, so thank you for taking us. Much more that. complicated than it looks from the historical center, I think. Well, I think, I think when I'm there next, I'll need you as a guide. To show yeah, sure. you. Will be a pleasure for me. And they want to introduce you there, keep your project where we uh, keep all the, the drawing, the documents, uh, the models of the architecture of the 20th century in Venice and not only, also in Italy. So I hope that uh, you will come to visit our archive. Well, I've, I've been to the archive and, and I worked in the archive with some students in 2019 from the University of yeah. Melbourne. So I know it well. Um, but next time um, I, I come knocking on your door uh, for, yeah, for sure. uh, to say hello. Look, I, yeah. I, have, uh, I have a question. Are you able to take some questions? Yeah. Um, look, first. If Francesco, I... if Francesco can help me for the tra translation, if I don't understand everything. Sure, Francesco. Certo, you okay no problem. Okay. Thank you. Uh, look, firstly, for me, what the lecture represented was um, an, an expansive uh, unpacking of the kind of mythology of the dichotomy between tradition and modernity in uh, Venice. Um, and I thought uh, as a way of representing that, the distinction between the historical center and the things around the historical center. So early in your lecture, you mentioned Marghera, uh, you mentioned Mestre, you mentioned the Lido. A little later, you mentioned the M9, the new M9 museum uh, in Mestre by Sauerbrook Hutton. I'm wondering if you could uh, give us uh, your thoughts 
on what uh, impact M9 may be having or have had or, or will have on the historical center of Venice. Given the M M9 is a significant architectural uh, work that is not in Venice, that is uh, in some way activates Mestre. Io penso che se Francesco mi aiuta posso dire qualcosa di un po' più approfondito. Eh, Francesco mi aiuti? Sì, posso provare, Serena. <laughs> Grazie. Allora, ehm, è molto strano che la bellezza di Venezia non sia mai riuscita ad arrivare a Mestre e che Mestre sia sempre stata considerata la periferia popolare di Venezia. Lo dico tutto, poi tu lo sintetizzi. E che quindi non abbia mai tratto benefici anche eh, come modello di vita dalla città di Venezia, che era così vicina. Um, L'opera che hanno fatto Sauer, Brook e Atton è all'interno di un processo di riqualificazione della città di Mestre che dura da un po' di anni e credo che loro siano stati molto bravi a capire la scala del progetto come parte della scala della città di Mestre e questo anche un po' a differenza degli altri concorrenti. Comunque la città di Venezia non è eh, molto sensibile al destino di Mestre, per cui sarà un punto importante realizzare delle relazioni tra M9 e le, e le istituzioni veneziane museali e espositive. Sono in corso, ma è un processo che si sta ancora realizzando, perché l'unità tra eh, Mestre e Venezia è ancora da raggiungere. I tried to synthesize what uh, Serena <laughs> said in, um, in some terms. Uh, um, we can say that uh, actually the, the, the connection between Venice and the mainland and more with the MNO, the M9 Museum, is a, is a process that is still going on. Because uh, uh, traditionally, Mestre, um didn't receive uh, any kind of influence from the historical center of uh, venice uh, traditional considered as a as a periphery in some terms even if uh, as we say there as a serena shown uh, we we had a lot of research about housing made by uh, important architects as someone uh, in uh, in the 50s and uh, and this kind of things but also we had a lot of projects uh, about housing also in the mainland that uh, finally were not uh, realized for example san giuliano designed by quaroni or also other other kind of interventions so probably um, as serena said the, the the intervention made by sauerbruch hatton that uh, also I know quite well uh, as uh, we, we work together to, to on the M9, uh, we, we support uh, the uh, Sauer Brooker Hatton office with the relationship with the heritage office during the M9 process. So I know quite well the, the, the intervention and the history of the building site. As Serena said, uh, is uh, surely a, a brilliant intervention also to manage the, the relationship uh, with, um, with the existing blocks on the surrounding of the intervention area, opening uh, uh, in a different way to, to, the, to the text of the city, yeah. you know, and opening a new way to cross through. And um, this kind of attitude uh, and uh, make uh, made uh, this place uh, very important for the center of uh, yeah. of Mestre, and uh, in some terms is a, a also a kind of high level architecture that also has a level of uh, culture in terms of architecture uh, bring. Uh, 
uh, able to bring it uh, in the center of master and uh, but also the relation and the the develop of uh, the relation between m9 historical center as in the map of the cultural institution uh, serena shown you know, in the historical center the red points uh, is something that um, is going on and uh, is to also to invent uh, in our times in some terms thank okay. you grazie francesco yeah thank you francesco uh it, it's great that we come back to this map because i i was a little shocked that there were so few red pieces i thought there would have been so many more red pieces on the map um so that was in, in a way quite comforting um look the last point i'd like to raise serena is and i think you said it very eloquently and that is that uh venice is a place of proposals yeah i think that was a really beautiful beautiful statement um will it continue to be a place of proposals uh or uh do you, do you see that as a, a kind of finite attitude that we need to get beyond e questo ho capito questo è un problema io credo che eh, le la bellezza i temi e la complessità di venezia siano eh, tra le sorgenti più fertili del pensiero architettonico. Ci sono altri luoghi belli, il deserto, bellissimo, però la complessità del, degli incroci che offre Venezia la fanno eh, per, per sempre, finché lei vivrà una sorgente di pensieri sull'architettura. Il Novecento è attraversato da infinite eventi eh, che chiamano architetti o anche architetti che vengono singolarmente in città per trarre da questo equilibrio instabile sempre l'origine di un proprio pensiero sull'architettura. Io credo che questo sia eh, nella, nella città, sia ineliminabile la città. Ovviamente eh, il tema del futuro della città è gravissimo e eh, da, dagli anni 50 si dibatte se Venezia debba diventare solo o molto una capitale mondiale della cultura, quindi riducendo il peso del turismo commerciale, chiamiamolo così. Però è certo che questo tema del rapporto tra la città d'arte, la città della cultura, che vuol dire progettare la sua, il suo essere città della cultura a partire dal fatto che è una città d'arte, eh, che era l'idea di Mazzariol, per esempio, insomma, ehm, ecco, questo si scontra invece con una bassissima vocazione turistica e questo è il problema enorme che, schia che schiaccia Venezia. Questo è un problema economico spaventoso, cioè è, è, ha un'origine economica ma ha delle ricadute sulla città spaventose. spaventose. Nel 1950 Venezia aveva 150.000 abitanti, oggi ne ha 50.000. Francesco, a te caro. <laughs> As uh, following uh, also some uh, items we discussed in the in the last uh, in the last days, um, so we can say, uh, as Serena said, that Venice is a place uh, so important uh, in um, in its complexity to to provoke uh, uh, reflection to provoke um, uh, the, the architects in some terms at the same time uh, um, as we we said uh, in the in the last days uh, the the actually the problem is to manage even if we had uh, obviously uh almost two years of a kind of in natural pause of this uh, to manage this relationship uh, between the, the the massive tourists we had uh, in growing in the in the last decades in uh, in an enormous way 
and uh, and this attitude uh, to to be a cultural place um, a cultural place with a lot of uh, of firsts but um, this two reality uh, probably doesn't uh, didn't find uh, 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 an equilibrium to live uh, together, no? Sometimes, cioè che queste due realtà, cioè la città del turismo di massa e la città dell'offerta culturale, Bravissimo. o quantomeno che ne ha guidato una parte dello sviluppo, come è mostrato attraverso eh, le, i decenni del XX secolo dopo, dopo la guerra eh, forse sì. ha, ha perso una, una qualche esatto. forma di equilibrio no? esatto esatto, mm. esatto. I hope that this uh, is clear Scott let me Scott is clear yeah it yeah, is thank you yeah yeah we got it um, okay. and look what, what I'll do at this point in time as you said it's early uh, for you We'll let you go and have, you and Francesco actually, go and have another cup of coffee. And uh, thank you very much for uh, taking the time this morning uh, and uh, giving us your talk. It was a real pleasure having you involved, Serena, and a real pleasure uh, to have Francesco translating. It was a, it was a translator, yeah. Thank you, Scott, for inviting me. Sorry for my English, but it was a pleasure to discuss, to present some problem of Venice, uh, which is a city for me fundamental in the contemporary culture. So have a nice time and uh, have a nice, beautiful project. And I will see them with the maximum interest. Thank you.